Good morning. Today is Good Friday. That's an ironic name. We as Christians came up with the name Good Friday to commemorate the day, but for Jesus' disciples in Bible times, there was nothing good about today. It's Friday morning. Jesus has been on trial all night long. He has been beaten and whipped. The soldiers mocked him by putting a royal robe on his body and a crown of thorns on his head. They spat on him, blindfolded him, hit him with their fists and cursed him. This morning, Jesus has been sentenced to death by Pilate. He's carrying his cross through Jerusalem to the hill where he will die. Good Friday was not so good. We like Easter Sunday, but we're a little hesitant to celebrate Good Friday. You know, heroes have emblems that identify them. Superman, Batman, Captain America, Wonder Woman. All of them have emblems that identify not only who they are, but what they stand for. As Christians, we have an emblem that identifies us, the cross. It identifies us with our Savior. Christians are not much different than other religions in that we claim that God is alive. Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism all say that God is alive. The huge difference of our faith is that God died. Christianity is the only religion that brags on the death of its leader. We say that the day he died was good. We celebrate the cross. We wear it around our necks. We display it in our homes. We put it up in our churches. We make beautiful ones out of oak, gold, and prominently display them. But the cross was a cruel device invented by the Romans. It was created to keep a person alive as long as possible while they died, to make their suffering as intense as it could be. The God we worship died on a cross. That notion is so shocking, so horrific, so scandalous that no earthly mind could have conceived it. No one could have possibly come up with the idea of building a faith on their God dying on a cross. The idea could only have come from heaven. Jesus journeys this road to the cross. It's a road of darkness, a road of shadows getting darker and darker until all the light is extinguished. But through the cross, God unveils his blueprint. It's like God unfolds the rolled up blueprint. He's kept it rolled up until now, revealing just a little bit here and there. Now everything makes sense. All the prophecies throughout the Old Testament point to this moment. Jesus was nailed to the cross. In suffering and agony, he died on it. He was pierced on the cross. And here's what flowed out of him. Forgiveness flowed out of him. While they were driving the nails into his hands, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. Promise full flowed out of him. While Jesus was dying on the cross, he said to the thief dying beside him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Compassion flowed out of him, not only for humanity, but for his disciples around him. Loyalty and longing flowed out of him. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even in his darkest hour, he still called out to his Father. Jesus grieved the separation that was happening because of the sin he was bearing. Confidence flowed out of him. Jesus knew that the work of the cross, the plan of God, was accomplished. And so he said, it is finished. And surrender flowed out of him. Jesus' last words were to give himself to God's plan, the blueprint that God had begun before the creation of the world. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then he died. The executioner, the Roman soldier who crucified Jesus, was so stunned at what came out of Jesus that he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. So my question is, how do you handle the cross? It's the elephant in the room. It's the inconvenient truth. It's the foundation of our faith, and yet sometimes we avoid talking about it because it's difficult. It's easier to talk about God's love and forgiveness, mercy and grace, and we should talk about these things. 
But the cross is ugly and painful and offensive and brutal. I think that how we handle the cross is wrapped up in how we see the cross. Remember the Superman movie, The Man of Steel? It came out a few years ago. So there's this scene that Superman says that the S on his outfit, the one that's on his chest, isn't for Superman. It's a Kryptonian symbol for hope. And I never knew that until the movie. I always thought that it was S for Superman, but that kind of made things a lot cooler. The cross has a symbolism all its own. It speaks all on its own. It speaks of God's love and his plan of redemption for us. It speaks of his forgiveness, his compassion, and his promise to us. And it speaks of his loyalty to us and how he longs to be with us. I pray that the cross speaks to you this Good Friday. I pray that it speaks clearly of everything Jesus did for you. The cross is a terrible symbol of an incredible act by a God who was driven by love for you and me. God bless you this fr Good Friday. See you Sunday morning.